times now, and uh, my EKGs have been normal. Sure.
Mr. Rottenberg, do you have the Thank redactions for me? We have one of the two. The other one we had to make one tweak to, and we're going to do that electronically at, during my cross examination. Okay. okay. All right. So which but one do you have? You have for one. Me? Uh, exhibit two fourteen. Two fourteen. We provided. All right. Here's another copy. So the redactions. Uh, reserving your other objections, the redactions are okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So two fourteen will be in evidence then. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do you want to get the witness back uh, on the witness stand before we get the jury here? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Dombrowski? All right, let's put her on before we get the jury out. That would be helpful. You can have it. <laughs> Mr. Rottenberg, you. Mr. Rottenborn, you're going to get me 214 after? Yes, okay. Your Honor. There so, was one. Okay. Your Honor, no, there, there's 210. Yes. This is 214. Oh, yes, 210. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. We'll put it up on the screen, for, but without the presence of the jury. So the judge will see it at the same time you do. Okay. okay. I just don't have to wait for now. All right. Are we ready for the jury? Are we ready for the jury? Yes, okay. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. You can have a seat, Mr. Dombrowski. Mr. Dombrowski, I just want to remind you that you're still under oath at this time, okay? All right. You want to continue with your cross-examination? Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Dombrowski. Good morning. So I believe we, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but you were, in addition to being Mr. Depp's brother, you were his, I believe you referred to it as his personal manager. Is that right? I have been referred as yes. Okay. And so you were responsible for or had some responsibility for his business affairs, right? I, I actually coordinated with other people, but I didn't have full responsibility. Right. But in terms of the information that you would receive, you, you would receive information that was relevant to Mr. Depp's business affairs and personal affairs, right? At times, yes. And you, you care about Mr. Depp's well-being, right? Yes. He's your brother. You, yes. you love him, right? It was important to you that you, in your role as both his brother and as his manager, be kept informed of his well-being, right? Yes. And if something was wrong, you'd want to know about that, right? Yes. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp had a problem with drugs or alcohol? No. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp romanticized drug culture? No. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp didn't take accountability for his actions? N I didn't have reason to believe that, no. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp lacked patience for getting his needs met? I didn't have reason to believe that, no. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. 
I'm asking if she had. I, I overruled, I'll allow it, that's fine. Let me ask that again, um, Ms. Dombrowski. Did you ever have reason to believe from anyone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? Overrule for this question. We'll see at the follow-up. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp could act like a child if he didn't get immediate satisfaction? I never had reason to believe that. Did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that Mr. Depp had fundamental issues with anger? Okay. reason to believe from someone other than Amber that your brother had fundamental issues with anger? I, I didn't have reason to believe. And did you ever have reason to believe from someone other than Amber that your brother didn't grasp the responsibility that he had in his children's lives? I did not have reason to believe. Heather, can you pull up exhibit 268, please? Ms. Dombrowski, is this an email from Dr. David Kipper to you on August 18th, 2014? Objection, sir. It's not being offered yet, so I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. I don't, I don't have it. Can, can you see the document on your screen? You no. might have to make it bigger. It's much smaller. I, I, don't, I don't have anything. Oh, do you? I'm can sorry. you see it there, ma'am? No. It's not showing up on your screen. Just bear with us one minute. Thank you. Do you have a physical copy that she could look at? Not that's not marked up. Let me, um, can you see if oh. you can, can grab one? Oh, wait, she's got it. Oh, okay. Turn it off and on, see? <laughs> that's the, that's, that's the, the trick. That's the judge rule. Eh? <laughs> Thank you. So take as much time as you need to read it, Ms. Dombrowski, but my, my question is, is this a, uh, an email from Dr. David Kipper to you on August 18th, 2014. Yes, it's got my name on there, yes, from him. And this is an email that you, um, that you would have received on or about that date, August 18th, 2014, to the best of your knowledge? It was, it was sent on that date, yes. And it's about Dr. Kipper's treatment of your brother, correct? I'm, I'm actually reading it. Okay, take your time. Thank you.
is there I'm sorry is there more to the there's a there's another page um, which we can go to but my, my question is just this and I think we established this this is an email that you received from dr. Kipper correct yes okay um, your honor permission to publish the um, the second paragraph on page one into the and the, then the the, the remainder of that paragraph on page two with everything redacted, else redacted. You're asking to enter it into evidence. Yes, we're, we'd like to enter it into evidence with those redactions. Your Honor, uh, two letters. Here's that. Here's that. Sure. Ms. Dombrowski, if you can take a look at the first page of that email, please, um, in the second paragraph. It, well, first of all, who was Dr. Kipper? Uh, Dr. Kipper was the doctor that was helping my brother, um, excuse me, um, helping my brother get um, help from the, uh, the uh, pain medication addiction that he had. He was helping him with his drug addiction? The pain medication. And he, he, your brother was addicted to pain pills. He had been taking them for a long time, yes. Right. And, and you were instrumental in hiring Dr. Kipper to help your brother try to deal with that, right? Yes. Okay. And so Dr. Kipper, in his role as someone treating your brother, tried to, to keep you informed of what was going on with that treatment, right? Yes. And it was important to you as both his brother, I'm his, sorry, his sister and his manager that you be kept informed of that, right? It was important as his sister. Yeah. And well, and, and his, his issues with drugs were having an impact on his career as well too, right? No. And you knew that they were having an impact on his relationship with Amber, right? She, she's given plenty of testimony oh, about it. You knew that the drugs were having an impact on his relationship with Amber, right? I knew that Amber claimed certain things. And, but you didn't believe that they were? I didn't necessarily believe it, no. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in a few minutes. It, isn't it true that on the bottom paragraph on, uh, on page one that Dr. Kipper informed you that your brother was uncomfortable and pessimistic that he will ever be able to stop doing drugs? Objection, I'm not, I'm not asking for this. I'll allow this question, but it's the only question on that point. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Isn't it true that Dr. Kipper informed you in August of 2014 that your brother was uncomfortable and is pessimistic that he will ever be able to stop doing drugs? He, he does write this in this email, but this email is an update. I believe if I'm looking at the dates and I don't remember all dates, but I know that period and what's written in the email. I think this was during the time that they were where he was getting help from Dr. Kipper. Right, but th that's what he informed you of in your role as his manager and his sister about the status of Mr. Depp's belief that he would be able to stop doing drugs, right? Objection, I'll allow that question. I think he was informing me of the conversations, yes. 
And he also informed you that your, your brother didn't take accountability for his behaviors, correct? He does say in here that he, yes, he, he wrote that he has no accountability for his behaviors in this time. And Heather, if you can go to the top of page two, please. In that first and second line, he also told you that your brother has fundamental issues with anger, right? Your Honor, objection to your side. No exception applied. All right. It's the same exception that applied to the other ones. This is what he informed her. We need to move on, though. Okay. okay. Heather, you can take that down. So you just testified, um, Ms. Dembrowski, that you understood from Amber that drugs and alcohol were impacting their relationship, but that you didn't necessarily believe that, right? Right. And you didn't necessarily share those concerns, right? Right. Did you have um, uh, an occasion to speak with Amber um, after a, a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May of 2014? Objection to your side. I just asked if she spoke with her. I'm not asking just, what the content. She spoke. I'll overrule the objection at this time. I, I don't recall specific times speaking with Amber like that. Okay. Did you become... Um, did you become aware of an incident on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May of 2014? Objection, lack of foundation. Foundation objection. If you, you I'll, she's I'll testified the, that she. I'll sustain the objection. It's foundation. If you can lay a foundation. Okay. Did, you, you, if something, if something happened in your brother's life that was notable, you, you wanted to know about it. You testified to that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, it's it's a foundation question. She's testified that she had insight into his daily life. I, I don't see it as a foundation question, so I'm going to sustain the objection if you want to. Okay. You, you, you were kept apprised of the goings-on in Johnny's life, correct? For the most part, yes. Yeah, and, you, and you, you testified yesterday you saw him just about every day, correct? When what I testified to yesterday saw him every day was when he was with the family of Vanessa. And you still saw him you, or were in touch with him fairly frequently as his business manager and as his sister when he was with Amber, correct? Less frequent. Okay, but still with, with some frequency, right? Yes. And if, if an event had happened that was potentially harmful to your brother, you would, you would want to know about that, right? Yes. Okay. And... All right, I'll sustain asked and answered. Next question. You, you, you made an effort to make yourself available to Ms. Hurd to talk to you about issues she was having with your brother, correct? I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I made an effort to talk to her anytime I felt she needed to speak. Somebody's trying to call us. <laughs> it's I, kind of a pleasant ringtone. I, well, I didn't answer it, so. <laughs> I don't know. Ms. Dombrowski, in addition to just Amber believing it, you believed that your brother needed help, didn't you? Objection, vague. Vague. You believe that your brother needed help with drugs and alcohol, overruled didn't you? The, overruled, overruled the objection. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I believed on the one medication I was concerned about. And you wanted your brother to get better from his addictions, right? I wanted to address the medication that he was on. And you understood that Amber wanted the same thing, wanted him to get better for both him and for her, correct? I'll sustain as to what Amber wanted. Um, now, uh, do you recall meeting with Ms. Heard on May 25th, 2014? I don't recall. Um, 
Let's pull up Exhibit 234, please. You said that was 234? 234, yes. Okay, thank you. The non-redacted version. Ms. Dombrowski, this is a multi-page exhibit that we can, um, we're not going to ask you about all the pages, but um, is this a text message chain between Amber and you on May 25th, 2014? Yes. And that those are your texts in gray on the left, right? Yes. And Ms. Hurd's texts in blue on the right? Yes. Your Honor, we have a, a, a version of this exhibit with Ms. Hurd's texts redacted and the personal identifiers redacted um, that I'd like to ask the witness about um, and publish to the jury. I'm happy. First, you want to admit it to evidence before you publish it to the jury. Correct. So right. So I'm just previewing that. Would you like me to go through the unredacted version with the witness first? No. Or? Well, well, if it's just her text, how does that, how is that probative if it's just her text? Because it's her text about what she, two things. One, it's her text about what she wanted for her brother. We'll get to those on page two. Um, It's, it's, I'm allowed to ask her about her, her own words and what her feelings well, sort you of You can wrote. ask her about it, but it's not coming into evidence. Okay, well, okay. Okay. Ms. Dombrowski, did you reach out to Ms. Hurd on May 25th, 2014? Yes. Asking her if she wanted to talk? Yes. Why did you do that? I, I... Did you do that because you had been made aware of an issue about your brother's behavior on a flight earlier that day? I, I the day before? I don't recall why I did that. You don't recall why you did that? No. Or you have no, no awareness or memory of a flight earlier that day or the day before? I don't recall all flights at all times. I don't have any specific memory of anything. Okay. Um, if you can turn to page two, Heather. If you can look at your third text down, Your Honor, or um, Ms. Dombrowski, you say to him, or to Ms. Hurd, you say to Ms. Hurd, I love him so much, but he needs help, and I don't have all the information to help alone. Do you see that? Objection, Your Honor. This is all hearsay. I'll allow that question. That's fine. I, I do see that. And what did you mean when you said he needs help? I don't recall the actual timing of it, but I wanted to help him with the that medication that he was on. That I know, um, and I know that um, I wanted to be able to be helpful in life because they were arguing all the time. And I believe you testified earlier that you didn't actually have concerns about your brother's dependence on drugs, right? No, I, I said that I, I did have about the, the medication. Just just the pain pills. It was the pain pills. Nothing else. I didn't have concern and So when you said he needs help, that's what you were referring to is that you you, you believe that your brother needed help with pills Objection, May I approach your honor all right
Heather, can you please pull up um, the, the pages ending in 934? Start with that, please. Actually, let's let's not let's let's go to um, nine three six. It, just for the record, this is still an exhibit two thirty four. It's just bait stamp page nine three six. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Dombrowski, do you see that the? the message that you sent to Amber three down where you said he is going to see the doctor in the morning with three exclamation points. Yes. Tell us, tell me what you remember about that. Uh, were you were referring to when you said he, you were referring to your brother, right? Yes. And by doctor, you meant an addiction doctor. Is that right? I, I believe I would have meant Dr. Kipper. Okay. And what was, it's, 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 you'd agree that it's fairly rare to get an appointment for a doctor the next day, right? I'll allow it. That's fine. I don't know that it's rare to get an appointment the next day. Well, Dr. Kipper wasn't an emergency room doctor, right? No. So what was so urgent about your brother's need to see a doctor that he was going to see Dr. Kipper the next morning when you texted this at 7.35 p.m.? I don't know that it was urgent. I think I was happy that he was going to see the doctor. And you were happy he was going to see the doctor because you thought he'd finally realized the problem that his drug addiction was having on himself and others, correct? That's why you were happy, right? I was happy he was going to see the doctor because I was concerned about the pain medication he was on. And you were concerned about what that pain medication did to your brother, right? Yes. You were concerned about the effect that that had on his life, right? I was concerned about him. And you were concerned about the effect that that drug addiction had on other relationships in his life as well, correct? Your Honor, ask and answer. I'm going through. That's fine, I'll allow it. You can answer. I didn't see anything that, that was happening necessarily in life to be concerned about others, me. Um, it was him I was concerned about. So you didn't see, your, your testimony today is that you didn't see any effect that your brother's drug problem was having on anyone else other than him. My concern was him. I wasn't focused on anything beyond that. Right, you weren't, you weren't concerned about the effect that it could be having on anyone else. Is that your testimony? Again, my concern was him. Can you pull up page 937, please? And when you sent Ms. Heard the text at the top of the page at 9.20 p.m. on May 25th, 2014, and you said, I just meant I will help in getting him help, what did that mean? It's help with Dr. Kipper, I believe. You, you were referring to getting your brother help for his drug addictions, correct? I was referring to getting him help with the medication that he was on. And if you go to page 938, please. When you told Amber at the bottom of that page at 10.30, 10.26 p.m., I think you need to tell him you are scared and you can't deal. What did you mean by that? I think you need to tell him you are scared and you can't deal. What did you mean by that? I'm asking her what she meant with one of her statements. It's no different from the statement I just asked her about. I'm just not sure what the prior inconsistent statement would be for this, which was? Well, that she's testified that all of Amber's concerns were overblown. Okay.
uh, drug abuse, you were concerned for your brother and your brother only. Is that right? I was concerned for my brother, yes. And only your brother. Is that right? That, my brother was my focus. Okay. Right. Now, you, as in your capacity as his personal manager, you were often apprised of your brother's performance on movie sets, right? Did you, did you have occasion to communicate with studios, for example, about movies that your brother was shooting? Yes. And studio executives would, could feel free to contact you about your brother's work? Yes, they mostly contacted the agent. Okay. And you were, who was the agent at the time? Is that Tracy, Tracy Jacobs? And that's the, the, your brother, Mr. Depp fired Ms. Jacobs in, in or around 2017. Is that right? I don't recall when. How long was Ms. Jacobs his agent? 20 something years. And he fired Ms. Jacobs at some point, right? Yes. After his divorce from Amber? I, I don't recall exactly when he fired her. Do you recall whether it was before or after he divorced Amber? I don't recall. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but in any event, you had frequent communications with Ms. Jacobs about your brother's work, correct? Excuse me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and you, um, in the course, in, in your capacity as his, his manager, you, it came to your attention that he was late to movie sets, correct? For, you testified that you had contact with, frequent contact with Ms. Jacobs, his agent, right? Yes. And that contact included when he was shooting movies? Yes. And that contact included um, communications relating to his conduct on set? Objection. I'm laying the foundation. Well, it, it sounds like your foundation is going to be based on hearsay, which is what we're going to be getting to. Well, I'm. If, if, if you can lay a foundation yeah. without it being based on yeah. hearsay. Did, did you have personal knowledge of your brother being late to a set? Movie shoots. Was I, would that be if I was physically there? Is that what you're asking? Or? Your Honor, no, first I'd, I'd instruct, I'd ask you to instruct Mr. Chu not to shake his head, nod his head to the witness. That's inappropriate. All right. I'm, I'm not shaking. Okay. I'm, well, he was. All right. Well, I'll, I'll keep a lookout. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Dombrowski, your brother told you himself that he was late to movie shoots, didn't he? Party admission. I'll allow that. I don't, I don't think he came to me and said I'm late to movie shoots, no. You learned from your brother that he was late to movie shoots, correct? I, I don't think he would have come to me to talk I'll, about I'll it. I'll allow no. it. You learned, so, so you never had any communications with your brother about issues that he had being on time to movie sets? Is that your testimony? No, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, is I worked with him for years. You know, there was never a, a really a, a continuous topic of whether he was late to a movie set, him and I having a conversation. He told you he had been late to movie sets, correct? Objection. Asking I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Can you pull please. up 348, please? 348. If you can, can you blow it up so you just see the second email down, Heather? And that second email down is an email from you to Tracy Jacobs on February 27th, 2015, right? I allowed that question. We'll see where we go. The second, all the way down in here? The second one down from the top. Senate 1250. Oh, sorry. Yes, 
that's from me to Tracy. Okay. Now, in the second sentence of that email, you write, he told me one to one and a half hours, but not two. Yes, he was two and a half hours late one day and seven hours recently. Do you see that? I do see that. And when you said he told me, you're referring to your brother, Johnny Depp, admitting to you that he was late to movie sets, right? I, I, I don't know that I'm referring to him now. Okay. Uh, in any event, it was a problem. As, as personal manager, you knew that it was a problem for the studios if he showed up late to set, right? I knew that on this particular film, there were times when he was late to set. You did know on this particular film? On this particular film. And this was this particular film is Pirates 5, correct? Yes. Pirates of the Caribbean 5? And he was filming that in Australia, right? Yes. And this email was sent on February 27th, 2015, right? Yes. Okay. So you knew that as he was filming Pirates of the Caribbean 5 on, in 2015, early 2015, that he had problems being late to the set, right? I, I wouldn't call it problems being late to set, but he was occasionally late to set. Okay. Uh, late enough that Disney executives called you to discuss that, right? All right. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. And you knew that this wasn't the only movie that he had been late to set for, correct? She's testified about her close involvement in his personal affairs when he was shooting movies. If you, if you lay a foundation, not based on hearsay. Well, have you, you talked to your brother when he was filming each of the movies that he filmed, right? Yes. Okay. And with respect to Pirates 5, he told you that he had been late to the set, right? No, I don't recall him telling me he was late to set. Okay, so despite the fact that you said he told me, you don't recall whether that was him or not. I, I don't know that that, I don't know that the he in that refers to him. Okay. You, you were also, I believe you testified yesterday that you were closely involved in, um, in the financial aspects of your brother's life, right? I was, I was closely involved in speaking with the representatives, but I wasn't really closely involved in, you know, his financial world. I had, that wasn't my thing. And your brother's, the income that he made from movies or other commercial opportunities that he had, that funded both him and, and it flowed, or it came in through his companies, right? And then... The money that your brother made came in through his companies, correct? I'm, I don't really understand your question. Well, you're the president of one of those companies, Infinitum Nile, right? Yes. So if your brother signs a movie contract, the money, is it paid directly to him or does it come in through, through a company that he owns? Infinitum Nile is completely a, a separate entity. So how he gets paid is that's the business manager's. Okay, you, you were involved with um, discussions of opportunities that he had to shoot movies, correct? Sometimes, yes. Okay. And you were um, in close contact with others on Mr. Depp's team about opportunities that arose, right? Yes. Okay, including Tracy Jacobs? Yes. His agent? Yes. In including, um, you, in fact, you would be in contact with studios directly as well. It's from time to time, right? Yes. And Mr. Jacobs, um, well, strike that. In your capacity as his, as his personal manager, you became aware of financial distress that your brother was in, correct? Because you... You were familiar with his financial affairs, right? I was somewhat familiar. That was that was the other representative's area. Okay. Did you have occasion to become familiar with whether he was undergoing financial distress such that he needed to get movies, a certain number of movies a year? 
I, Tracy had a certain number, excuse me, a certain number of movies per year that she wanted him to do. And the certain number of movies a year, to, to your understanding, the certain number of movies a year that your brother had to do was necessary to stave off financial distress, correct? The certain number of movies per year, Tracy would push for a certain number of movies per year because it was, a, it was beneficial to her. That, that's the only reason she pushed for a certain number oh, of movies a year? That's the main reason Tracy would push for a certain number of movies per year, yes. It, not, not because it was beneficial to Mr. Depp? If it was beneficial to Mr. Depp, then it was going to be beneficial to Tracy. Okay, but just because it was beneficial to Tracy doesn't mean it wasn't beneficial to Mr. Depp or his companies, Objection. correct? Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Now, at some point, you became aware when he was filming Pirates 5 in Australia, you be became aware of an injury that he suffered to his finger, right? Yes. And you were involved in trying to cover up how it happened, correct? Objection, lack of I I'll allow the question. I'm not sure I understand the question. You were involved in helping to cover up how the finger injury happened, right? I, I, I don't understand cover up. You, you, were, you were involved in making sure that people on Mr. Depp's team didn't say how he hurt his hand, correct? I'll allow it if she can answer it. You can answer. Um, we certainly didn't want um, any press to know about it. So that's, you know, to keep it from that. Um, and, and because you didn't want any press to know about his finger injury, you told Mr. Depp's personal assistant to make sure that he wasn't to say that he wasn't sure how Mr. Depp hurt his hand, correct? You instructed him to say that. If it was someone that I would be concerned that the word would get out to the press, I, I would have done that. So it was, it was okay to you to tell people to lie to protect your brother, right? It, it wasn't necessarily a lie. I didn't know how he hurt his finger myself at the time, because I, I, I'm pretty sure I know the time frame you're talking about is when it first happened. And you have no personal knowledge to this day of how he hurt his finger, correct? Because you weren't there. I wasn't there. Heather, can you pull up exhibit 210 redacted, please? Your Honor, this is um, the exhibit we discussed yesterday. Um, if the court and Mr. Chu agrees with the redactions, I'd just like to publish it to the jury uh, and admit it into evidence. Well, if it's 210, it's already in, in evidence. That's the one you uh, gave it, me this morning, correct? No, that's a different one. Yeah, I think that was 214. That was 214. I'm sorry. I got it backwards. This is 210. And I believe that this Follows. is this, it's just one page. Or it's two, it's two pages, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's these two pages that we talked about yesterday. Right. Reserving your objections, are the redactions correct? Uh, the redactions are correct, we reserve our redactions. Okay, that's fine. Say, I will enter a 214 into evidence uh, over, over objections. Permission to publish, Your Honor? All right, yes, sir. Can you blow that up, please? <clears throat> so, Ms. Dombrowski, we discussed this a little bit yesterday. Um, this is the text exchange between you and Ms. Hurd on February 3rd, 2014, where Ms. Hurd says, JD is on a bender, and your, your response is, where are the kids, correct? Yes. Can you just scroll down, please? 
Let's go to the next page, please. Let's scroll down to the bottom, please. And then you text Amber, worry about everything. Is that right? I, I wrote the words, worry about everything. It was myself. I was speaking about myself. And you tell her, I don't love any of it, correct? Right. And, and to, to stay, we, we did go through this yesterday, but go ahead. And, and two days later is when you sent your brother the text messages that said, stop booze, stop Coke, stop pills, correct? I'm not looking at it. I don't recall the timing of it. Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Redirect. Yes, Yes, okay, thank you. Good morning, Ms. Tombrowski. Good morning. During Mr. Rottenborn's examination yesterday and again this morning, uh, he spent a lot of time talking to you about your brother's alleged drug and alcohol abuse. Do you remember that? Yes. You're not denying that Mr. Depp ever used alcohol or drugs, are you? Objection leading. It's redirect, Your Honor. That's still leading. Um, I'll sustain this leading if you want to rephrase your question. You also testified uh, several times in response to Mr. Rottenborn's questions that Ms. Heard tends to say things in a more dramatic manner. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. Why did you say that? I've had my own interaction one-on-one -on -one with Ms. Hurd, so I know, I know a bit about her personality. Um, she would, she, you know, she would present information to me um, that was not necessarily information that was supported by everybody else that was around. And, and I've spent a lot of years working with my brother. We have a close team. We've, you know, it's, it's a many years of trusted people helping, you know, uh, make sure that everything in life, it, it works out and goes smoothly. Um, but all those people where I would have a daily contact you know, whether it's about scheduling or just how the day is going for all the years. Those people never said the same thing. Objection hearsay, Your Honor. I think it was responsive to the question. Well, I'll sustain the last, the last sentence. I, I, yeah, I just, Your Honor, just, just the last sentence of it, that's all. Un understood, Your okay, Honor. I think, right it, as well. I think it goes to state of mind rather than the, the right. truth. I just did the last sentence. I'll sustain just the last sentence. Thanks, Your Honor. The last sentence, okay? And do you recall your testimony yesterday when you stated that after the phenomenal success of Pirates One, one of the changes to Mr. Depp's, your brother's personal life was that there were a lot more people around him after that. Do you recall yes. that? Yes. When Johnny and Ms. Heard became involved in a relationship several years later, were there still several people, well, there's still a lot of people around them, your brother, on a regular basis? Yes. Who were those people? He had, he had assistants, he had security, he had, you know, property managers, people that helped at the house. There, he had a, quite a few people that were around all the time. How often did you communicate with those people? Um, I communicated daily not necessarily with each one of those people, but I communicated pretty much daily with people within the, the world, the circle. Did any of those people ever raise the same concerns that Ms. Heard did? Objection hearsay. All right. Again, it goes to state of mind. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Next question. What, if any, concerns were expressed about Johnny's behavior when using alcohol. Objection, hearsay. All right. Again, it goes to state of mind. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? I do not believe so, Your Honor. She's subject to recall? No. Yeah, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Broski, you're free to go, or you can stay in the courtroom. It's up to you, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Broski. All right. Your next witness. Good morning, ma'am. Isaac Peruch. All right. We'll get him. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. While we're waiting for him, can you spell his last name for the court reporter for me? Yes. Uh, B A R U C H. Thank you. Hey, there's a thing here, transcript. Thing. You can just so, keep it there, sir. Have a seat. Okay. Put the microphone the, uh, close to you, please. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Isaac Baruch. I S A A C B A R U C H. Mr. Baruch, where do you currently live? I live in Los Angeles. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes. How do you know Mr. Depp? I know him from since teenagers. Uh, we met in Florida. And could you tell the jury a little bit about your experience meeting Mr. Depp when you were teenagers in Florida? Yeah, uh, we were both playing in bands. We had mutual friends, and uh, that we met in probably 1980. And uh, yeah, we hit it off. We got along with each other. And uh, yeah. That's... How often did you see Mr. Depp when you were teenagers together in Florida? A few times, a uh, few times a, a month. I'd say it could be more, a little more, or whatever. Because you know we'd see each other at parties and clubs, nightclubs where the bands played. Yeah, like that. And for how long were you both um, living in Florida and seeing each other somewhat regularly? Well, we we met in like 1980. So, uh, and then we both moved away. He moved to California. I moved to New York. What was that? 80, from 80 to 83. That was that like four years. What were your impressions of Mr. Depp while you were um, both living in Florida at the same time? Oh, he's a, he's a sweet kid. <laughs> A oh, sweet guy. Sir, sir, wait, there's an objection. Oh. Thank you. What his impressions were back then? Oh, what's the relevance? Just to... establishing the background and the right. relationship, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question, please. All right. Um, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when Mr. Depp uh, moved away from Florida? Yeah, yeah. And where did he move to, if you know? Like I said before, he moved to California. At some point in time, did you also move to California? Yeah. And did you um, reconnect with Mr. Depp when you got there? Yeah. Around what time was that? Sometime during the first year. And uh, then afterwards, after the first year, uh, more and stuff. Yeah. About what year would you say that was? Oh, I moved to California in uh, September of uh, 85. 
And did you know um, if Mr. Depp was working when you arrived in California in, in 1985? Well, I knew, I knew he was pursuing acting at that time. Yeah, I, 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 he's looking for work because he's pursuing acting. I, How often did you see uh, Mr. Depp when you first moved to California? Well, like I said, the first year, a few times. Afterwards, I had a friend who, uh, whose girlfriend uh, lived in the same building as Johnny. And that, so then hanging out over there, I ended up seeing Johnny more often. And plus, my friend who, I, who I'm talking about, who, whose girlfriend lived in the same building, he was playing in a band and they needed another guitar player, and Johnny ended up joining the band, so we were hanging out a lot more often. Um, what were you doing when you moved out to California? I was pursuing music also, working retail jobs and trying to get a band, make a band, you know? Did there come a time when you began working for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? Oh, that's later on. That's like in 1993. What were you doing for Mr. Depp when you started working for him in 1993? Well, he owned a place called the Viper Room, and uh, which is a music venue, a nightclub, bar, and bands play. And uh, it was already open for six months. And uh, the girl who was working, the, the person who was working the as office manager didn't want to work there anymore so the guy who was running the place for johnny who's a, a friend named sal jenko another florida friend from back in 1980 when we all first meet he calls me up and he says hey isaac do you want to do work this job i don't think it's offered for the I truth of the matter I, I mean that, can we that's fine that? I'll, I'll overrule the objection go ahead at some point in time, did you stop working at the Viper Room for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah. When was that? Well, I worked from 93 to 98. In 98, I moved away. Did you return to L.A. again at some point? Yes, I did. When was that? I moved back uh, December of 2002. What did you do um, for work when you returned to L.A.? Well, I, for two weeks, I worked at an art gallery, and then I uh, went back to the Viper Room on New Year's Eve. How long were you working at the Viper Room at that point in time? It was another year, and then the place changed hands. Were you working um, on anything else while you were working at the Viper Room in that time frame? Yeah, I, I was work uh, sidewise. I was teaching myself art. And what steps were you taking to teach yourself art at that time? Books, learning how to draw and uh, paint and uh, taking community uh, college classes. At some point in time, did you uh, begin pursuing art at a, on a full-time scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Well, I was working at, working at the Viper Room, taking classes, and then at, uh, uh, at one point, the club changed hands completely after a year, 2004. And I was given a choice of either keep working for these new owners or uh, Johnny out of his pocket was gonna give a severance pay to whoever didn't wanna work there uh, anymore. So I took the severance pay and then it helped me continue on to, to finish community classes, private classes, and then be able to transfer to uh, Cal State University. And did you get a degree from Cal State University? Yes, I did. What degree was that? BFA. What year? 2010. Um, after you received your BFA, did you continue to pursue art full-time? Yeah. Did Mr. Depp ever express an interest in your art? Yeah. When was the first time that happened? Well, first time you saw a painting in 2008. And then the next time was 20, uh, 2012. Uh, I had uh, made a painting and sent it to my best friend uh, uh, email uh, in an email. And uh, he forwarded it to Johnny. And Johnny emailed back saying, hey, when Isaac wants to sell that, uh, whenever he wants to sell that, to go ahead and 
get in touch with me because I want to buy it. Did Mr. Depp ever buy that painting? No. Why not? Because when I brought over paintings, I, I had moved back to uh, California and I, w I brought over a bunch of paintings for him to look at and see if he wants any. To buy, buy any, and he looked at me and says, I got an idea. How about I be your patron? And we put together an art show, make, some, make, make a body of work, and then we'll, I'll throw a party and invite people, and I'll sell the stuff for you, and you could keep all the money. So he didn't, he didn't buy any paintings there. Instead, he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, he was going to financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. How did he plan to do that? Objection to what he planned on doing. What did you understand he planned to do to, well, to could, make that possible for you? I could tell you, I could tell you that uh, it, it what it included was that the next day I ended up moving into he 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 uh, I moved into a, a art studio penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building. It was listen, I got a place for you to go ahead and li uh, live and work and put the, this body of of art together, and uh, I'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. And what was the place where you were going to live that Mr. Depp offered you? The Eastern Columbia building. Did you, um, did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying. Is you know, one day, you're, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for $100, $200, $300 on eBay. Next thing you know, you, you, it's an art show and like you don't have to worry about Deadly Squad. Of course, of course. I was, I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. The next day, the next day I get, I get a phone call from a guy named Kevin Murphy who is working for Johnny and I go to, and he says, hey, meet me at this address. And I go to, and I meet him and here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s, some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I go, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in and I'm like crying, going, "This is a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me." Mr. Bridge, how long did you end up living at the Eastern Columbia Building? Three years and seven months. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to show the witness plaintiff's exhibit one sixteen. All right, one sixteen. Am I looking at something? You will in a second, sir. It's not on the screen.
I'm just going to pull up a paper copy for a moment. We can see it, but he can't see it. We'll just use a paper copy. We'll get this resolved at lunchtime. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bruch, do you recognize the document um, that you're looking at that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 116? Yeah. What, and what is it? This is uh, the floor plan of the roof, uh, all the penthouses up on, uh, on the roof at uh, the Eastern Columbia. And that's the building where you lived um, starting in uh, March 2013, is that right? I moved in the first week of uh, March uh, 2013, yeah. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to move into um, evidence, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116, please. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 116 in evidence, you can publish to the jury. Is it, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I just want to be sure that- Yeah, they, they can it, see it in the gallery, see okay. it, he, we'll just have to work on that right, screen. Great. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Bruch, can you um, describe for the jury what um, is depicted here in Exhibit 116? Uh, yeah, that, uh, so the right side of this uh, graph is, uh, there's a pool there, there's, a, uh, there's uh, another uh, top of another apartment that actually starts on the floor below. It's a two-story apartment. Um, but there's a pool there, and there's a, a, a gym, workout room. And the left side, there's a, at the bottom, there's an X, and that's uh, the elevator. And so you walk out of the elevator, you make a little uh, left, and there's part of Penthouse 5 right there, straight ahead. And then you keep walking straight and then you make a left a sharp left and the actual penthouse five is straight ahead and then you hang a right and you walk start walking up that way on your right is going to be penthouse one on your left is going to be penthouse four when you get to the end of that corridor this is the door for penthouse three and if you hang a right Oh, look, there it is. It came up on the screen. And if you hang a right and you go down to the end is the door to penthouse two. That's the apartment that I lived in. And who did you understand owned these penthouses? Oh, Johnny owned them all. Which one did you live in? Penthouse two. Was anyone else living um, in the penthouses at the time that you moved in in March 2013? No, I was the first one to move in. I moved in the first week of March, and then a couple of weeks later, two, three weeks later, then Johnny and Amber moved in, and then after that, the next one to move in is Rocky, Raquel Pennington, Amber's uh, friend, and then at some point her sister moved in, Whitney, and uh, also, uh, at some point, uh, Rocky's uh, boyfriend moved in with her in penthouse one. So I believe you just testified that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard moved in uh, shortly after you moved in, is that right? Yes. And which penthouse did they move into? Penthouse three. And then you testified, I believe, that um, uh, someone named Rocky Pennington moved in? Yes. Who was Rocky Pennington? Amber Heard's friend from Texas, and I, I think they made, I don't know, I'm not sure if they told me that they moved out there together or something like that, but um, yeah, her friend. And later you said that um, her boyfriend moved in with her. What was his name? Josh, Josh Drew. And which unit did they live in? Penthouse one. And I believe you also testified that um, Whitney moved in. Who was Whitney? Whitney uh, Heard. Uh, she's married, so she's got a different last name. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, 
Amber's sister, Whitney. And which of the units did um, Ms. Heard's sister li live in? Four. Um, can you tell the jury a little bit about your relationships um, with Ms. Heard, um, Ms. Pennington, Mr. Drew, um, and uh, Ms. Heard, um, sister? Oh, yeah, I, I was friends with all of them. I loved them all. They all treated me with respect. Was, we had, it was great. Uh, you know, I'm an old time friend of Johnny's living, living there and we we're all looking out for each other. We became great friends. I fell in love with the, all of them. When you moved in um, to Penthouse 2, you were working on an art show with Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, that that's the entire reason that I'm there is to to, the, to uh, uh, work and put together this art show. Did you have a time frame that you expected to be able to put on that art show? At first, when we first powwowed this idea, when you know, uh, it's it, we talked about all right, what do we do? You know, what's what's this show going to be? What how many paintings? Is it, is it going to be? And we came up with a number. Okay, so there's going to be a certain body of work. I'm not, I'm not a known person. I'm just some schnook painter. It's, so there's, and it's, if I was a famous painter, I could make five paintings and, and the room will fill up. But so we decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale. And, I, and Johnny says, hey, what, how long do you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to compete, complete the paintings in the in a few months? No, it's it's after. It took me to, to in order to, to make two large scale paintings. It took me like oh, to almost two months, and I'm to, I'm start freaking out. Going, uh, I'm only got two paintings, and all right, I got to do twenty five. I said a few months. So I ended up going to Johnny's place and, and saying, hey, look, dude, this is going to take a lot longer than a, 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 a few months. I, don't, I could only make two paintings. And how did Mr. Depp react? He looks at me and he starts laughing and he says, Ike, don't worry. I do not care. I just want you to paint however long it takes. Just I want you to paint every day. During the course of the time that you were living at the Eastern Columbia building, um, did Mr. Depp ever give you any money? Yeah. How much did he give you? Over a period of four years the, of the patronship, I, ca I ballpark calculated probably around 100000 And how, how did you come up with that amount? Well, from the first from the first get go, when I said, hey, look, I need dough, you know, to buy stuff and, and, and to, you know, do this, he, I ended up getting an envelope the next day with $5,000 in it. And then I budgeted it and, and stretched it out and, you know, and so every few months I'd, I'd get an envelope. It could have been that I didn't know if it was going to be the same amount, but it ended up being the same amount, which was, wow. Uh, so basically around five grand every few months. So in a year, that's 20 grand. But then also there was a period, uh, maybe a, a year or two might have been that it was five times I had to ask for, for dough or it was four. And then on top of it, so I, so right there, that could be 80 grand or 90 grand. And then on top of that, I ended up uh, uh, getting a herniated disc. He sent me to the doctors to get an MRI and, and see the doctor get an MRI. And it, there was 10 weeks of, of uh, therapy that he covered. So I throw that in there too. And I ended up coming up with the figure of 100, 100 grand. Could be a little less, could be a little more. What was your understanding of whether Mr. Depp intended to be paid back for the oh. money that he provided to you? There's no, it's, he, that's not even the thought of being paid back. This is something that he wanted to see happen. This is something he, he invested in. To, 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 he knew it was, he, had to, he was going to spend money to make it happen for me to survive and paint 
and create this thing that he wanted to see because he liked the art. And so there was, and there was no payback. And the, the whole thing was about him selling the art so that way I, for, so that way I keep all the money. He didn't expect anything. It was, he was doing this as a friend, as he's done with many other friends. Right. I'll sustain the last sentence of his his, his and statement. Could explain to the jury that Spike didn't even think that. Right, we've, we've done that, but that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when you um, decided that you planned to pay Mr. Depp back? Oh, yeah. That, f for me, when uh, when he, 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 he's, he, he's told me he had a money situation going on, for me, it was like, this guy just changed. He's been, he's been uh, making it possible for me to live and work and, 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 and make product and that, and, and I'm, uh, by that expense, I'm part of the problem. It's like, how do I help him? How, how can I help him? I mean, he's sharing his sandwich with me, you know? It's like if I how do I how do I share that my half my sandwich with him give him that half to make something up that's it's you you don't you don't not do anything and said the only thing I got is paintings so I I stood up when he's he's telling me what he's telling me about his money situation and for me I said hey it's this is if these things ever sell. We got to split this 50-50 and I ain't taking no for an answer, something. I got to add, I got to put something into this. So uh, as the, for me, I looked at it like he's got to, he has to get something back. Mr. Bruch, during your time living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her, just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's uh, t uh, t totally respectful, gracious to me. Uh, that she's got great teeth. Uh, that she treated me with complete respect. Anytime I walk into the, she's at the humor wise, total uh, locker uh, locker room humor, demented humor. Totally laughed at you know the jokes, uh, made the jokes, totally got along with her. Every time I walked into their place, Isaac, you want something to eat? Isaac, you want something to drink? Every time. There's only one time I remember that she didn't offer because I walked in and she's in the kitchen at the counter and she's doing a beauty facial mask and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. And that, and I'm laughing. And then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. So, um, yeah, Mr. I loved her. Mr. Bruch, did Miss Hurd ever visit you in your penthouse? Yeah. Do you recall the first time that she visited you there? Yes. When was that? The first time is that, uh, it's in March when they moved in, and they were there for a, a, a couple of days, and I didn't even know. And Johnny had called me, says, "Hey, come over, meet my girl." And that, and then the, and so I did. And then the next day, they came over to my place uh, for the first time to see how I had set up the art studio, the uh, lights, and you know, just what's my painting set up and stuff, and to look at other paintings. And they walked in, and I remember the first thing she said was, I hope we didn't keep you up last night because of all the yelling. And I, I looked at her and I says, no, these walls are like three feet thick. I don't hear deadly spot. How did she seem when she said that to you? Well, she's semi-joking and inquisitive, you know, like they did, you know, to find out. Um, in your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia Building, did you have opportunities to observe Mr. Depp's and Ms. Hurd's uh, relationship? Yeah. Can you describe uh, what you observed about their relationship? They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold. You know, 
kissing and and you know can what can I get you type of thing you know being kind with each other always loving always a loving situation how often would you say you interacted with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd if they were there because they're traveling they're doing they're working and doing stuff if they were there I saw them maybe two three times a week could maybe uh, uh, there might be one time one time a week that I see them that I go over to hang out or you know see them or they might come or Johnny might come over to visit or you know like that since you've known them um, did you ever see them get physically violent with each other never did you ever see them argue yes how, how many times probably like twice um, can you describe the arguments that you witnessed? The first argument that I remember was uh, walking in. Uh, there was a it was a telephone argument. Johnny's at the kitchen table and he's argue he's 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 screaming about something, and on the other line because it's on speaker and he's talking with the phone at at the phone. Uh, the other person is, is Amber and that she's in New York and he's, uh, at the kitchen table and, uh, they're arguing and he's going, who is it? Who is it? And she's saying, oh, baby, come on, please don't, what are you doing, baby? Why are you being like this, baby? And this went on for a little while and I'm listening and then he hangs up. She calls back again. And it's the same thing. Who is it? What's going on? Who is it? And she's she's saying, "Oh, come on, baby, don't be. What are you What are you doing, baby?" And and then hang up the phone again. The third time it happens, I'm saying, "This what, there's no solution in this conversation." I grab the phone from him and I says, "Hey, Amber, this is Isaac. Listen, this conversation is now over." And I hung up the phone. And. She didn't call back again, and he went to the couch and went to bed. I believe you said you saw them argue twice. Was there another time that you saw them argue? Uh, I ended up uh, going over, and there's at the kitchen table is Johnny, is Amber, is uh, Rocky, and Josh. And, they're pa and I'm going, what are you guys doing? And they're hanging out and they're pow trying to plot a f to figure out a way how to get rid of Whitney to not live there anymore. And I felt bad. I like Whitney. So, was, you know, oh, well, you know, that's that's going to be a drag. And, uh, I was, I was, you know, what are you plotting? You know, how do you figure out? Hey, lend your sister some dough and let her move out. But, you know, they're trying to figure something out something differently or whatever. At one point, so uh, there was a point, Johnny got completely, uh, you know, flustered and, uh, and frustrated, and he got up and he walks away, and as he's walking away, he says, figure it out. And that was it. That was the whole thing. I don't know if you want to call it, I don't think you uh, might, might call that an argument, but uh, Your Honor, I'm about to um, switch gears a little bit. It might okay. be a good time for a mid-morning break. Perfect. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and uh, have you take your morning recess for 15 minutes, okay? Just remember to not talk to anybody and do not do any outside research, okay? And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Do I stand? You, can, you can stay right here. That's fine. You don't have to stand. Thank you. Sir, I just want to remind you, since you're still on the stand under oath, you can't talk to any of the attorneys or Mr. Hurt at this time until your testimony is done, okay? Okay. All right, and we'll be back, and we'll be back at 11.45, okay? All I right, got to okay. stay here the yeah, whole time? Yeah, you have to stay the whole time. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 